So back to college. You graduate. Ah, uh, then... no. So I'm in college. I go. Uh, um, I go to intern at the White House before Monica Lewinsky makes it popular. Right. <laughs> it's for George Bush Senior. And I'm there for about six months, and the guy I'm working for gets fired. So I'm kind of uh, also at a dead end. So I end up going to work for a congressman, Dana Rohrbacher, who had been an original speechwriter for Reagan. And I met some great people through that process. And I took two significant trips as an intern. In fact, well, they tried to hire me as the staffer because his his foreign policy guy had been mobilized to go to the Gulf War. A guy became a dear friend, Paul Behrens. But um, my dad said, don't take the job. Don't accept a dollar because it'll put you in Washington, D.C.'s tax bracket. And you do not want to pay taxes there. So I didn't do that. But um, I took two trips. I went to Croatia. Well, actually, it was to Yugoslavia in March of 91 before the war started and toured all through the areas because there had already been some fighting between Croat and Serbian forces and Slovenian forces. And figured that there was going to be a war there. Uh, and then I went to um, Dana Rohrbacher, the congressman, who was going to do a, um, an expose on communist atrocities during the, um, uh, when the Sandinistas took over in the early 80s. And so he sent me and another intern down to Nicaragua to meet a contact there. It was the first time I ever had to shake surveillance because the Sandinistas were still in charge of the police and the military there, even though the government had been uh, in the hands of Violeta Chamorro. But we had to go shake surveillance. We were off at 4 o'clock in the morning and, and takes us out to this field and digging away, and sure enough, it's a mass grave. Shattered skulls, arms uh, and legs tied at the waist or at the wrists, and it was, uh, it was a very sobering moment, a great reminder of, of how bad things can get quickly. And a week later, I got married in Alexandria, Virginia, to uh, a girl I'd met uh, a couple years before, to Joan. And we went on a... Um, that was a great thing about my parents is they really encouraged travel, to go see and explore and to do. And so we went... Uh, on a tour called the Baltic Liberation Tour, which was to Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, Poland. We started in Poland and took a train through those areas, which was still part of the Soviet Union. And you could see it was coming apart. And I remember as we were leaving, you have to put your luggage. We're flying, so the whole tour is leaving, and we're leaving from Tallinn, Estonia, to fly to Finland. And one of the... Um, one of the guys in our group put his luggage on the scanner and you could see this bag go through and it looks like there's a complete manhole cover inside of his bag. Hmm. And this Soviet border guard opens the suitcase and he says, this is a very big problem. It was an entire bronze bust of, of Lenin that had been yanked off a building that our friend had bought on the street and was taking out of the country. Oh. And our buddy said, well, how much to make the problem go away? <laughs> $50. Done. I thought, you know what? If they're letting the bust of Lenin go off of a, a government building for 50 bucks, this place is not going to last long. And sure enough, four months later, the Soviet Union collapsed. Wow. So that was, yeah, that was April that that happened. And, and you know, by August, there was the, the tanks in the front of the parliament there with, with uh, Yeltsin. And the Soviet Union was done.